Online family, we are so excited for you to be joining us today. My name is Molly. And my name is Brandon. And we've got a great service in store for you today. First, our worship team will be coming up to lead us into God's presence. And then we've got a great message to follow. Thank you for joining us today. And, and welcome, welcome home. home. receive this blessing this morning. Your family and your children, their 
Morgan here and let me be the next to say welcome home. If you are new around here or maybe you've been coming for a while and you would like to know more about our church, our mission, and vision, Growth Track is a great next step. It's even a great next step to getting involved if and when you are ready to do that. Growth Track takes place upstairs once a month during the second service. It's also a great way to meet some of our team members. It only lasts about 45 minutes. For more information, text the words Growth Track to 94000. If you've never been water baptized and you would like more information on upcoming baptisms, we would love to help you with that. Water baptism is a fun and exciting way to celebrate your faith publicly. Just like a wedding ring says, my heart belongs to my spouse, water baptisms say, I belong to Jesus. 
If you would like more information on water baptism, text the words Welcome Home to 94000. You will receive a link to our connection card. Fill out that and click Baptism. Someone will be in touch with you soon. One last thing, if you have a child in our children's ministry, from infancy all the way to fifth grade, we have an app designed just for you. It's called Parent Cube. By downloading the app, you can continue the conversation we're having each weekend with your child. I know you want to disciple your child and equip them for life, and we want to equip you to do that. So check it out today. Hey, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Surprise. <laughs> I know y'all probably thought we're going to go to hear Jason, Pastor Jason, preach an awesome message today, but no, not today. <laughs> so, um, so since it's Mother's Day, we thought we, why not host a day in honor of all the mothers in the house today and those watching online. So what we're going to do today is have a Q&A session conversation with a panel of moms up here. So um, I'll, I'll just go through and introduce who they are and who they represent. Uh, and then I'll give them a minute to, to tell a little more about themselves in just a second. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, oh, <laughs> let's go here first. I messed up. <laughs> okay. So on the end, we have Molly Arnwine, who is a new mom. Uh, she's representing the new moms today. And then we have, I'm so glad Miss Shirley is up here. Shirley Humphrey. <laughs> She's representing the grandmothers today and all the grandmoms. Uh, and then she, you can see, you don't know if you can see it, but she's got a little pin on that says Wonder Woman on there. <laughs> and I have Cherie Smith, who is representing our single mothers out there. Uh, she's not single now, but for a period of time she was single. And we know that single moms, they, they just work so hard. So... Um, and then we have uh, Brooks Clayton over here, who is representing our stepmom, but we're going to call her a bonus mom today. Because, and I didn't say this in the first service, but reading all the Disney characters, all the, all the, all the stepmoms were always characterized as evil stepmothers. <laughs> and that is not true. <laughs> So, uh, so I'll tell a little bit about myself. Um, if you don't know me, my name's Melissa, and I'm married to Jason, uh, who's the senior pastor at a church called Home. Uh, we've been pastoring the church for uh, uh, not, almost nine years now. We have uh, two adult children. I have uh, Tori, who is 23, and she just recently got married a few months ago. And then we have our son, Chaz, who is 21. He's still in college, and he works, so... And I'm very proud of my kids. My name is Molly Arnwine. My husband and I, oh, there we are. <laughs> my husband and I lead worship here. We have two kids, a two-year-old and a four-month-old. So it's a little hectic in the Arnwine house right now. But I am happy to represent the new mom today. Uh, I'm Shirley Humphrey. And <laughs> I have a good family. <laughs> I wanted a big family. Praise God, I got one. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, five children, and I don't like this thing in my face, but anyhow, <laughs> I have five children, you know, and I've spread them out quite a bit, but I love my children, and uh, four of them are in church with me, and my grandbaby's near thing, but one is in Indiana, and he is at church up there. He's yeah. a big member of the church up there. And I'm proud of my children. Hi, my name is Cherie Smith. We don't take a lot of photos at my house just to get these. It was difficult. I do have three children. Two are not featured up there, unfortunately, because I don't have any recent pictures. I don't like taking photos much. Um, I have a 25-year-old beautiful daughter named Kaylin. I have a son. Um, he's 19. His name's Coy. And then the princess... That's literally her name at the house, uh, Abby. She is almost 16, so pray for my household, please. I'm Brooks Clayton, and I'm married to Josh, and we have five kids, um, Jackson and Jonathan, Jordan, Mackenzie, and JD. Um, the boys are all mine, and the girls are my, my stepdaughter, so 
Um, our life is interesting. 19, 15, and 5. Yeah. So, <laughs> older girls and older boys are the same ages. So. Well, I just want to say thank you all for being up here with me today. I would not want to be up here by myself, so I'm so thankful. Um, so, uh, I would like, um, I'm going to ask a question here. I'm going to ask all of y'all some questions, uh, and then I'm going to direct questions to you. So, so the first question I have um, is, what has been the greatest challenge being a mom? I think my greatest challenge right now, of course, I'm a new mom, so it's going to be different than <laughs> others. But my challenge right now is um, just to balance being a mom and also being who I am. Because before you're a mom, you can do whatever you want. You have your own identity. And um, now that I'm a mom, you take that role to the things that you did before, but it's something added. And I'm still kind of trying to balance who I am with also being a mom. So I think that's my challenge right now. My greatest challenge um, has been watching my older kids um, get hurt by others um, who they've looked up to and, and things. That's tough. I think my greatest challenge, uh, looking back on all the years that I've raised them, um, was the middle school years, especially for girls. Girls can be really mean in middle school. If you don't have any girls, you know, just thank God. <laughs> um, I mean, boys are a lot easier to raise, uh, in my opinion. Because I second I... that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anybody else want to? Uh, for me, the greatest challenge is as they grow older, you want to keep protecting them and keep them, like, under your wing. And you have to... You think you're praying hard when they're little. As they're getting older, you pray a whole lot more um, that God will protect them because they stop looking to you at certain times. But then they come back around, so it's yeah. all good. <laughs> well, I think the greatest challenge I had was uh, when Deborah was small. Uh, she, she started getting sick and having temperatures and was on antibiotics and everything. And they finally found out that something was not right in her kidneys and her bladder and all that and so they took me into a room and told me you know um well we can keep treating her and everything and she'll need surgery but she can live with one kidney or there's always transplants wow. <laughs> and when you hear something like that as a mother you're devastated with that right. thing and also another point in my life was when uh, some of my children were hurt because of a uh, a divorce and that was a difficult time too that we went through for it was a whole family thing to go through a divorce yeah. um what has changed since becoming a mom that you've learned or realized anything changed uh, becoming a mom actually brought me to God. I got saved when I was pregnant with my oldest, wow. which she's well aware of that because even being pregnant before she was here, I realized that my life is much bigger than my own selfish desires. Um, and having her, I started to understand unconditional love and, yeah. and the heartbreak I brought on my mom in certain times. Um, unconditional love definitely comes through as you become a mother. You, don't, you think you understand it, but once you become a mom, you really understand it. Because no matter what they do, you're still there with your arms wide open, just like God is still there with his arms wide open for you, no matter what you do. Um, so, Cherie, since you answered that last question, <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit your days of being the single mother raising kids, how God has provided for you? Um, when I became a single mom, I was uh, in Tennessee by myself. All my family is out of state. They would send love and support as much as they could, but I was literally having to figure it out one day at a time, sometimes one moment at a time. Um, God provided just a couple of ways he provided we were never homeless. We always had food in our stomachs. It wasn't glamorous at times, but um, he utilized friends that were nearby. Alicia and David Irvin actually helped me in the very beginning when I became a single mom. Um, there was one instance the very first Christmas. I didn't know I was going to pay for Christmas for these children because I was just trying to take care of them. And um, God opened a door, and I was in a reality show. It was very embarrassing. By the grace of God, it didn't air, but I still got paid. 
socks and my kids still had Christmas, literally. And then I, who, who, I didn't seek out a reality show, it just kind of happened. So then another instance, I needed to have a surgery um, and I'd saved up money. It had to do, deal with another emergent, that money was dwindled away by something else. But um, somebody at my job had left me the money, the actual amount that I needed to be able to have that surgery and have the time off. Um, didn't know who it was, but God, even though I didn't have all the answers, and trust me, I was afraid. There was a lot of fear there, and which isn't from God, but he kept showing up and showing out in ways that I couldn't even explain and just kept looking at me saying, I'm still here, and I've got this. You might not have it, but I've got this. Um, and it was totally him. That's awesome. Um, so being so busy, raising your children, working, um, how did you replenish yourself and keep from losing yourself uh, through all of that? Um, I... Lots of prayer and lots of time with God. I have to have time with God even today, even though I'm remarried. Um, you can ask the princess who gets to deal with me daily. She knows if I've spent time with God or not by my <laughs> attitude to this day and right now. Like you, you, She's back there. You can ask her. Um, just spending time with God, um, trying to get enough sleep. Rest is hard. Amen. As a mom, period. <laughs> uh, you know, single mom, I've worked multiple jobs and was in school so there were no days off um, rest is very important and for me exercise I love exercise so I don't really have hobbies other than exercise which I know is weird but I am a personal trainer so you know um, just try to make time for yourself even if it's 10 minutes a day so this goes for all of uh, all of the ladies up here anybody can answer uh, this um, what is what is your greatest desire and wish for your children uh, my greatest desire is for them to be in the house of the Lord, all of them. You know, that's that's what I wanted uh, for my children. Was, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's what I wanted for my family, you know, to be in God's house, to, to know the Lord. It was That was my priority because I felt God told me, he said, I gave you five children. You're, I require you to work to get those children saved. And keep them in church and everything. That was my calling. Yeah. People say, what's your calling? You know, and I think, mm, uh, and God told me. My calling was to take care of my children, keep them in church, and make sure they love the Lord. And then he, uh, I, I did work with children in church. I babysat other people's children with my own children a lot, too. And I even got them when I didn't even want them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would drop them at the driveway and say, stay at the Humphreys house. And so I raised some more that way. But, you know, uh, I love those kids, too. And, and they came back and told me how much they loved me. Some of them did because they were dropped off there for me to kind of watch and everything. But just, you know, you have to know that you want your children to love the Lord. Yeah above everything if you're a christian that's what you want for your children love the lord and also i gotta tell you this you have to demonstrate what you want you yeah. cannot just tell them that's right. what you want in your life you're you're the bible for them right. so whatever you're doing i've seen this and some of it is really embarrassing for parents what their children will what the words that would come out of the kid's mouth for a lot of people because yeah. They didn't, they, just, they weren't saying what was godly their own selves. So, you know, demonstrate how you want your children to live. Yeah, I, I agree. That That's what I have always wanted for my children is that they grow up knowing, um, well, for one, that they, they can always come to me yeah. at any point in their lives. I don't care if they're 75 years old and I'm 95, <laughs> you know, they can come to me, but also that they know that they can turn to the Lord at any time, and they 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 know the voice of God. So that's that's what I've always wished for them. I think one of my greatest desires right now is just that they're kind, <laughs> because they're not born saved. I don't know if you guys know that, <laughs> but you got to work for it. <laughs> 
But um, we're starting at the foundation of discipline right now with our two-year-old just because, you know, they're born tyrants. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, I won't say that. <laughs> She's great. She's just, you know. But um, <laughs> so I'm just, uh, my greatest desire is just for them to be kind. And we're trying to demonstrate that, just the love of God for them um, in hopes that that comes out, that it's like an overflowing effect. Um, we're still working on it, so. <laughs> but that's my greatest desire. Um, Molly. <laughs> um, how do you cope with struggling, the struggle of putting your husband before your children? <laughs> that is an actual struggle. I'm sure a lot of people ag will agree, whether they're a new mom or later on. But um, I have found that I have so much more patience for the kid that runs around all day demanding goldfish from me, <laughs> screaming on the floor about it, like she's just, you know, temper tantrums. I have so much more patience for that than I do sometimes for my husband, who is my partner, who is patient with me and does everything he can to help, and yet I am more prone to... Um, have a good attitude attitude towards the younger ones. <laughs> so I think um, I do struggle with that sometimes. And we have found that we need to go on dates <laughs> to get away and just like breathe for a second. But also we have to um, just keep claiming just the word of God over our marriage and over our family and um, just speaking things into existence that we're going to, you know, flourish as partners and as parents. Yeah. So I think that's how we that, that that is good, and I, I failed a lot when I was a new mom like you. Uh, uh, you know, after a couple, couple of months of having our firstborn, you know, I went back to work full time, and all I wanted to do was come home to her, yeah. you know. You know, I, I had the attitude of like, Jason, who? who, 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 who who's Jason? <laughs> you know, and then it got, after a few months of that, it got to a point where Jason said, Hey, if I lay on the bed and kick and scream and cry, will you come by and pick me up? <laughs> so, and I think you have to intentionally make time for, for your husband. Yeah. Um, so, uh, now this question is for everybody. I know I uh, was, you say you weren't born saved, but I, I, I think I was born on the front row, front <laughs> pew. <laughs> But, um, like, my dad was a pastor, and I uh, was raised in church. To, we went to church four times a week. You, you think coming to Sunday is a struggle? Like, my mom and dad would take us four times a week. We had Wednesday night, Saturday night. Well, I don't even know why that. But <laughs> Sunday morning, Sunday night. And um, so, but I know that there's some of us up here who, who didn't have that experience of being brought to church every Sunday, being read a Bible story to at night. So uh, how, do you, how do you biblically um, parent your kids if your parents didn't do that for you? I didn't grow up um, not in church. I was in a different denomination, and we didn't have a lot of prayer in our house, and I don't really remember um, even learning uh, just Bible stories like I teach my kids now. But I think um, for us since it doesn't come naturally, since I wasn't raised that way really, that I have to be really, really diligent in making that something that my kid has because it doesn't come naturally. And um, even now um, when I'm praying, you know, for myself or worshiping, I try to do it out loud so that she sees it and that she sees me worshiping. I try like in the car to turn on worship music and lift my hands so that she sees that that's um, just a gesture to God. And... Um, for an example, we were, we, I had a flat tire the other day on the way to work. I posted that on social media, so some of you might have seen that. Um, it was 6.30 in the morning. It was raining. It always happens in the rain. And we were on the side of the interstate, and it was really scary, and I was scared. And there were trucks passing, and I turned around to Ada Grace, our two-year-old, and she looked scared. And um, I was like, are you okay? Are you scared? Is it scary? And she went, mm-hmm. And <laughs> I was like, do you want to pray about it? And she was like, mm-hmm. And she held out my, her hand to me. And we prayed out loud and turned on worship music. So even though it was a scary situation, um, I tried to just instill that into her that that's what you do in those, in those times. So, um, For me, it was just 
getting, because I wasn't necessarily, we were kind of in and out of church growing up. Um, but when my children were young, I did start trying to utilize taking them to church and just learning to be an example of that, having a relationship with God, not just the act of taking them, but letting them see me in prayer and worshiping. Um, when Abby was little, the princess over there, she had high anxiety and um, I didn't know what to do with it. I know what God's word says about it. So I would literally take um, scriptures about fear and I had her name next to them and I would say them and make her repeat it um, because God's word is where power is. And so I wasn't necessarily raised in that, but that was something that I utilized with her, and I, th I, th I think it really did help her. I'm not sure. She's never said anything, but she would calm down. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so this next question is for our grandmom here, Miss Shirley. Um, how has your relationship changed with your children as they've uh, they've gotten older? Like you said, like all the five of her uh, adult children actually attend a church called home, and I think that says so much. Says so much. And then, like she said, her other child is in another state. But um, how has your relationship with them changed? Uh, well, they're, they've become my friend now, mostly because. Uh, my husband passed away. Um, <laughs> here I go again. Uh, my husband passed away 11 years ago, and, it, you know, I met him when I was 14 years old, so he was my life for years. You know, that was my life was my husband and my, then my children. And it was a difficult time, but my girls stepped in and my son stepped in. I got to go to Hawaii twice, one with one we son saw. and one with the other. Uh, so they stepped in and, 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 you know, done things for me. I, you know, if you've ever had to go through a situation where you had to deal with insurance, because he did pass away, but our insurance got all messed up, and I had Amy there who had done that at work. And then Allison was always, let's go for a ride, Mom, or let's go do this. And Deborah was always there. And so they became friends to me then, too. Not just my children, but they became my best friend. My family became my standby. That's who I went to was my family because I knew they loved me, and I loved them forever, you know. And I always told my kids, friends come and friends go, but your family's always yeah. there for you. So it's, it's hard. Otherwise, if you don't have somebody that can really love you, mm -hmm. it was hard, but they did love me, and they took care of me. Yeah. <laughs> and they still do. <laughs> well, and I, I've always watched their relationships with each other. And they seem to have each other. I mean, they're friends with each other. Um, and they've got a good relationship with, with their brothers and sisters. And I know that there are moms out there who um, they worry all the time because there's, you know, distance between, you know, their children, and they don't get along or for whatever reason. Do you have anything to, any advice for that, for those moms who are struggling you with that? Know, I, I, it's hard. Uh, I've seen people who don't even talk to their family. I mean, you know, like she said, they, they're just separating everything, and it's a difficult situation to be in because your family is there. Mm -hmm. When we sang that song about the, your generation and your generation and then the next generation, you know, I was thinking as we were singing that song, the curse was going to last a little while. Mm -hmm. God said there's a curse going to come on some people, but it's just going to last a, while, a little while. But the, the blessings of God is from generation to generation to generation. And if you have that with your family, you are most blessed. If you have, don't, don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your grandchildren. You tell them who you think they are, who God thinks they are, not what the people around think they are. It's what God knows they are because you've, if you ever confess it to yourself, even go in, go into your room and say, "I confess my children are all living for the Lord. They're all doing what they need yeah. to do. My grandchildren are blessed. They don't have any problems because they got God on their side." Anyway, 
And people say, well, you're telling a lie. Mm -mm. I'm telling what I've got already in my heart. That's what I've got in my heart. I want all my children saved, all my grandchildren saved, all my great-grandchildren saved, and serving the Lord. And I've got a list. Every night I go down this list. It's in here. It's not on a piece of paper, but it's in here. And these are what I want for my children. Keep praying for your children and your grandchildren. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. Um, So I have a a question for Brooks here, who is our bonus mom today. Between them, they got five kids, right? Yes. And and your your situation, I mean, there's a lot of people... In, in the world who are in your situation so and I know that it's not easy like you said right. it can be <laughs> exciting very uh, challenging <laughs> very challenging um how do you um mother all of your children the same um well I don't um <laughs> I, I don't mother them the same I do pray for them all the same um I do want good things for all of them I want them all to to love Jesus and and go after God, um, but you know our relationship is every other weekend, uh, mostly. Um, sometimes it may be once a month. Sometimes it may be once every six months that I see um, the girls. So, um, as far as trying to mother them all the same, that is that is not uh, that doesn't happen. Um, but I do love them. Um, so I have one last question for all of us. Um, I, I'm looking at the clock back there. <laughs> um, so what is the one thing that you want all of us to know or um, put it this way, any advice uh, you may have for all the parents out there, the moms? For me, <laughs> um, if you're not in this situation already, if you haven't done this, There will be a time when you will tell your mom that they were right. (laughs) And my mom was in the first service, and she was, as soon as I left, she was like, so are you going to tell me I'm right? (laughs) But it's true, because I thought I knew everything when I was a teenager, and now it took being a mom to know, like, oh, yeah, she had my best interest. She knew what she was doing, and I need to parent my kids that way, too. So there will come a time when... You go to your mom and you tell them that they're right. It might be hard, but do it anyway, guys. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've said that very thing yeah. so many times. Uh, uh, do what I'm saying right now. Right. You'll understand when you have kids. <laughs> you know, so. yep. uh, I guess the main thing I would say about um, trying to parent children is say what you want them to be. Mm-hmm. Don't ever tell one he's a demon. Or a tyrant. Can or I? a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> uh, you can say it in your mind, but don't say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, speak words that bring life. Yes. Yeah. Speak words that make good boys, good girls. Don't speak words that. I heard one woman tell her child, you probably end up in jail. You know where he ended up? In jail. Sweetest young man you've ever known, but he ended up in jail. Don't ever tell your kids what you don't want them to be. You tell them what you want them to be all the time. Don't call them demons. Don't call them devils. <laughs> well, that, that's, there's so much power in our words. And when, you, when you're speaking a word over a child, you're basically prophesying over that child's life. So, yeah. um, so I have a couple of tips. <laughs> um, don't fall into the comparison trap. Right. Moms, what you see on Instagram, social media, um, don't sit there and scroll and just think, well, they've got it all together because it's a lie. <laughs> they don't have it all together. Um, I know when, um, when, when I first had my children, um, you know, I always worked, and I would see these moms who would be, uh, you know, stay-at-home moms, um, you know, and 
I, I was, you know, actually envied that, you know. Uh, and then all these moms that put on social media, oh, I'm homeschooling my kids. Well, I could never, <laughs> okay. I, I don't have the patience for that. Um, so that's one of my, a, a, a piece of advice. Don't compare yourself to other people. We're all imperfect. Imperfect. We all have imperfections, so, um, and we all have flaws. Be the mother that God wants you to be. Uh, And then the other little piece of advice I have is to get in your kids' business. Amen. (laughs) Um, When Tori uh, first, you know, got social media, all the social media apps, Twitter and Instagram, well, I downloaded those apps. She, she, you know, she would get Twitter. I got Twitter. I had her password on my phone. I would get notifications, like when when some little guy would slide into her DMs or whatever. Uh, I mean, it would pop up on my phone, and I would I would either question her about her or I would text someone back. This is Tori's mother. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> or I would block them and didn't, I wouldn't even tell her. <laughs> but it's so important. I know they need a little bit of privacy, but not that much privacy. <laughs> um, uh, there are people out there who mean your children harm. They're predators. So get in your kid's business. They will thank you later on. They will thank you later on. And... Um, so that, that's my piece of advice. Um, for me, whenever you're going through things with your kids, whatever ages they are, and you need some advice, sometimes family and your spouse and all of that is too close to the situation. And I've learned to seek counsel from people that are, you know, in God's word, counseling just outside of the realm because they might have some words of wisdom because they're not emotionally tied to the situation. It takes a village to raise these guys. There's a reason that's a saying. It really does take a village. Um, And then another tidbit of advice that I have is there's a lot of gray in parenting. You know, don't beat yourself up. Give yourself some grace. Um, Just keep showering them with love as much as you can, no matter how much they test it. Children are challenging. Um, they can be very emotionally draining. Um, just stay focused on God, and and um, and He'll get you through. That's the only. Yes. That's the only way. Yes. Yes. That's good. So I have one. Uh, I have a, a letter here uh, that I want to read. Um, it, a pastor's wife wrote this letter, so it's it's titled "A Letter from a Pastor's Wife." Um, So I made it through this without totally falling apart in the first service. So I think we can do it, girls. (laughs) I might need that tissue. (laughs) Yeah. So um, so I just want you just to listen to what I'm reading here and just soak it up, okay? Um, To every woman acknowledging the wide continuum of mothering, To those who gave birth this year to the first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with the little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we 
we remember them and you on this day. And I just want to say that there's redemption. There's forgiveness and there's redemption. Um, To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way that you longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and also rejoice with you. (laughs) To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. And to those who are stay-at-home moms, we celebrate the fact that you're able to do this and applaud your commitment. And to those who must or even want to be in the workplace each week while other caregivers are taking care of their little ones, we release you from any guilt that you may have while your heart is at home. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. And we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. Isn't that awesome? So when we were preparing for uh, the message today, and I hope you've enjoyed it, um, uh, I was telling Molly, I said, I know your your two little ones are, are, are... can do no wrong. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. But there will come a day when you will be disappointed. Yeah. Because their children, they're not perfect. They still, they're still learning. We're all still learning. And it was at that moment in my life when I was disappointed that I realized the love that Jesus has for me and all my imperfections. And I realized there's nothing that my children could do that would cause me to love them any less than I love them right now and will forever love them. So uh, I just want you to know that if you're feeling, um, if you don't know the love of God, that I'm going to get ready to pray. And there's an opportunity for you to ask Jesus into your heart and and to just accept his love because you may not feel like you're loved, but you are loved by God. You are loved by, you're so loved by God. Um, So can we just um, bow our heads right now and... Well, I hope that message spoke to your heart. And if you're watching and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, if you're away from God, uh, if today uh, you just, you don't know if you left this life where you'd be, You know, I'd love to pray with you right now. And right where you are, you can pray with me. You can open your heart up and you can receive Christ into your life. And and the Bible calls it being born again. And I love that thought, being born again, because when a baby's born, a baby has no past. It's just that moment forward. The past, there is none. And when you receive Christ into your life, your past is cut off. I mean, all the wrong you've ever done cut away from you. So come on, right where you are, pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, there you go. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I need you. I receive you. Thank you for saving me, for changing me. In Jesus' name, come on, say amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to celebrate with you. So what I want to do is I want to send you a free copy of my latest book, Making a New Start, because that's what you just did. I promise it will be a blessing to you. So do me a favor. If you will, text the words, Welcome Home to 94000, 94000. When you do, you'll get a digital link to our connection card. You can fill it out. And you can check, I gave my heart to Christ, and I will send you a copy of that book. Hey, listen, also, if you're a part of our online family, I appreciate your giving right now. You can give in a variety of ways. That's going to be on the screen below me. I appreciate you so much. You can send it in by snail mail. You can text and give. You can give online. You can give through our app. 
I appreciate that. You know, uh, one of the things I love uh, about the last year, 2020, one of the most challenging years for all of us, and, and it's a challenging year for the local church, but we ended 2020 giving somewhere in the neighborhood of right about 15%, I think it's 14.8% of our income we sent out. And we sent that out through food pantries. We sent that out through checks that we mailed people in our congregation that lost both uh, mom and dad had lost their jobs. And so, I mean, I'm so grateful for your giving because your giving enables us to be Christ to those around us and abroad. So thank you for your giving. Can't wait to see you next time. God bless.